Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. I'm so excited to make this video. So like my E90 most common problems video, this, this video is gonna go over some of the most common problems on the E46 chassis. And then on that video, I also had a lot of questions on do I prefer the E90 or the E46? If you guys have kept up with my channel and all my social media, you guys know that me and Selena both, who's my girlfriend, we've got a bunch of E46s. So that should answer your question right there. We love the E46 chassis. It is so affordable, especially now that they're older, their value has went down so much. All the parts and stuff, if you do everything yourself, is a lot cheaper than an E90. It's just overall better. I'll actually try to make a whole separate video on, on which car you should choose, E46 versus E90. Depending, depending on your preferences, you might have to choose the E90 over the E46. But that'll be for another video. Let's go ahead and get on with this video on the most common problems on the E46 chassis. This video is not really gonna cover as much of the M3, so the E46 M3, as much as it is the non-M. Uh, we are gonna be working with this coupe right here. This is the $800 coupe that we bought. It's all over our vlog channel if you guys wanna go check that out. It is very dirty, it's just been sitting outside. So like I said, this is a coupe. Some of the stuff that I talk about won't exactly apply to this. It might apply to a sedan or a different type of coupe. This right here is a 2002 325CI. We're gonna start off with under the hood. So I've actually taken off the cabin filter housing and the vanity covers, but everything else should be the same on most E46s. So we're gonna start off with the most common issues underneath the hood. The valve cover gasket, whenever the valve cover gasket starts leaking, usually you'll see oil building up on the exhaust shields right here. And then whenever you have your car on, it'll be smoking, it'll start smelling like oil is being burned. Especially when you have the heater on, the, that, the fumes will actually go into the cabin. So valve cover gasket is one of the most common oil leaks. Then you also have the oil filter housing gasket. A lot of people that don't really know much about these cars, whenever they hear that, they automatically assume the O-ring that goes in, in this oil filter cap. But that is not the housing gasket. The housing gasket is the entire housing that, this, that the oil filter cap screws onto. So in order to access that, you actually have to pull off the alternator, you have to unhook the power steering pump, uh, all the belts, pulleys, and then you can access that gasket. We have a video on a DIY showing this whole process, so feel free to check that out. So on these motors, the M54, uh, even the M52 TU, when they actually start aging, the Vanos is underneath this valve cover, and the Vanos seals, they start wearing out, and then you'll start losing low-end power, and usually around 100,000 miles, they're pretty worn by then. There are, there are a few companies that make replacement seals for it. Uh, one of the companies is based on systems. Their Vanos seals kit actually has new seals, uh, and they will restore that power. And you can go check out their website to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, moving on to this side of the engine, uh, we'll go over some of the vacuum leaks. So, E46s, especially now that the oldest one is about 18 years old, almost 19 now, most of the rubber items over the whole car should be pretty worn by now. But more specifically, we'll talk about the vacuum leaks. That usually starts with the air intake boot. So there's an upper intake boot, a lower intake boot. Then you also have a bunch of rubber hoses, one from the fuel pressure regulator. Then you have this one, then you've got a few lines in the back. Uh, you also have the CCV system, which is a very common issue with these cars. It can cause a misfire code, uh, system too lean, and you can even start having your car smoke out of the exhaust pipe. So the CCV system, I also have a video on that. We'll have that link down below. And it's also uh, referred to as an oil separator system. There's about four hoses that are attached to it that can all cause vacuum leaks. Another common issue is the DESA valve. So the DESA valve, uh, there's a flap inside the valve. Whenever the flap breaks, then you might even hear some rattling noises when the car is on because that flap is gonna be moving freely. Uh, you will get vacuum leak codes. Uh, you can get a 0171 or a 0174. They do make rebuild kits for these DESA valves. Uh, if you try to buy a new one, they're still over 150 bucks. Whenever you do buy a new one, it comes with a new gasket and it'll seal all that up. Continuing on with vacuum leaks, uh, there's also the issue with the secondary air system. Uh, this is the codes P0491, 0492. And usually the secondary air system, depending on the year model, they did make a few changes. Uh, this is the earlier model. So it has the vacuum line that actually runs from the valve all the way around the valve cover to the back of the intake manifold. That's, that line is the most common one that breaks because it is connected with a small rubber hose right here and then a solid vacuum line that goes all the way across and then another rubber hose that connects to the back of the intake manifold. You can also have issues with this rubber hose that starts to crack and will cause vacuum leaks. 
and then ultimately you could also have issues with the pump itself. If you try to buy the pump new, it is still very expensive, but there's a lot of people that sell used ones for about 50, 60 bucks. If the pump is bad, the easiest way to test this is when the car is on a cold start, it usually cuts on for about 30 to 60 seconds. The first time you turn the car on in the day, just open the hood, turn the car on, and go check on this pump. You can even feel it vibrate when it's turning on. So just put your hand on it, see if it's making any noise or if it's vibrating at all. If it's not, then more than likely your pump is dead. So at the front of the engine, I know everybody probably has heard about this issue. It is the cooling system on the E46s. The cooling system is primarily plastic. Expansion tank is plastic. Uh, most radiators actually have the plastic tanks on the side. The radiators on these cars don't really bust as much unless they're really messed with. Whenever you're removing these hoses, sometimes those quick connects can be a, a pain on the top and the lower radiator hose. So sometimes you do stress the mounting points and they will crack. Uh, so that can lead to radiator failure. But besides that, the plastic lines that uh, go underneath the intake manifold, uh, they're, all, they're usually referred to as a heater pipeline. Uh, those will also end up wearing out especially if you use the wrong coolant, they get corroded inside of the housing that they go into. So sometimes those will start to leak. But besides that, most of the common leaks are uh, sustained to the expansion tank, the lower temperature sensor on the lower radiator hose, the thermostat, the water pump, and the lines that directly attach to the expansion tank and the expansion tank connector on the bottom. If you guys want to see more in-depth videos on all of these systems, I actually have a lot of this stuff already covered uh, and goes more in-depth. We'll try to link as much as we can down below, but you can always ultimately just go on YouTube and search it up and you'll see a bunch of videos on this. So like I said, this is a 325, but one of the more common issues that a lot of people complain about is on the 330i motors. So those motors are known to burn oil, uh, sometimes even as much as a quart every thousand to 1500 miles. Some people do get away with uh, burning less oil by doing the O2 pilot mod on the CCV system. Uh, be sure to search that up if you don't know what that is. And some other people actually end up deleting the whole CCV system entirely and going with the catch can setup. And that sometimes helps as well. But even then, the 330i motors are known to burn oil. So also with the cooling system, we'll go ahead and talk about the clutch fan on the automatics. Uh, manual E46s all came with an electric fan, ex except for the M's of course. But on the automatics, you have this fan clutch. This one is actually bad, so you can see how hard it is for me to turn it. Usually they should turn pretty freely. Like I'm putting a lot of pressure on this and it's still not turning freely. What, what usually happens with that is whenever you're driving the car, whenever you step on the gas, it usually sounds like a bus or like a big truck because the fan spins up so much. Over time, when that does start to occur, what will happen is the bearings in that fan clutch will give out and the fan blades are prone to breaking off and a lot of stuff can go wrong at that point. So you're better off replacing it as soon as you start hearing that little fan noise. So this section right here is actually known sometimes as the air dam. Uh, and you can see it's already starting to break. It's all rubber and plastic. Uh, this, you can buy this whole piece separate. It attaches to the whole radiator support. A lot of people actually just leave it as is they pull off the rest of the rubber. It doesn't look as bad. It feeds the air cowl right here that goes into the air box. But another common issue that a lot of people complain about are the kidney grills. Especially if you remove it once, the, the tabs that are all behind the kidney grill that hold it in place usually break off. And when this happens, you'll have the kidney grill rattling, moving around. Whenever you close the hood, sometimes they'll pop out. Or even when you're driving, sometimes people lose kidney grills. Now if we look at the headlight, this headlight right here in specific is a halogen unit, uh, but on the xenon unit, so if you had a projector on your normal low beam, some of the projectors on the inside of the projector bowl, they start to burn inside. When that begins to happen, your light output starts turning yellow and it starts reducing. There are a bunch of retrofit kits that replace that entire projector housing or even just the lens as well. So be sure to check that out if you are starting to experience that. Next we have the windshield cowl and overall rubber seals around the car. So as you can see, you can see this gap between the windshield and the cowl. They do make an entire replacement cowl that you can get on sites like ECS Tuning for like 80 to 70 to $80. And that will replace this whole cowl because usually what happens when they're sitting in the sun, they start warping and this rubber will just start tearing apart and it just gets hard and brittle like everything else. We also have these rubber seals around the windows. This one's not as bad, 
but sometimes these will start getting very cracked and mushy and when that happens it'll just start looking really bad and then you can have potential air leaks or air noise whenever you're driving on the freeway. So as I was mentioning about the rubber, so this is the rear window seal. You can see it's very cracked and it's mushy in some spots. And this actually happens more common on the coupes. On the sedans, uh, they don't have it as, as exposed as this one. Theirs are usually between the pillars, same with the wagon, but it does occur on that as well. So before we get into the car, another common issue is the door lock cylinder itself. Sometimes what happens is the door lock cylinder will just turn freely. Like you see it's not doing anything and it just turns. And what happens with that is the inner mechanism of the cylinder itself it actually breaks, but there is a repair kit. The repair kit's less than $15 and you should be able to fix, fix that at home by yourself. I will try to make a DIY video on this shortly whenever we repair this one. Let's go ahead and get into the car. So here's the door lock itself. There's an actuator that controls all the door locks on the E46. Sometimes those actuators do go out, and if it's not the actuator, another issue that happens very common is the GM5 module. Uh, this is more commonly known as the whole body control module, and sometimes uh, when the relays on that module start to go out, the door locks won't operate properly, sometimes the windows won't operate properly. Uh, you can even have issues like the sunroof opening and closing, and a bunch of other weird electric related issues. And if that is the issue, there is, there's quite a few repair services in place for that. If you just go on Google and type in GM5 module repair, you'll see some of the most common ones. There's a guy out in California, Torrance, California, that repairs them and he's really good at that. And his turnaround time is really good, so be sure to check that out. And then with the coupes, uh, since they do have frameless windows, sometimes they do rattle. Uh, this is more common in the convertibles. Convertible tops make a lot of noise as well because of all the rattles. But this right here, you can see there's, it's pretty loose. You can adjust it by removing the door panel and putting shims between the actual window regulator itself. Talking about window regulators, that's another very common issue on E46s. Not so much on coupes as it is sedans, but the window regulators tend to give out so much. The more you use them, the more they give out. Sometimes people report failures in as soon as three to six months. We have a video that covers the whole repair process for that as well, so be sure to check that out. Also on the E46, people complain about water leaks. Uh, the main water leaks that you will notice is sometimes your floorboards will get wet. Uh, if you have like a rubber mat, you might not notice it as much, but underneath the mat, so when it's the bare carpet, you might feel it wet in the front or even in the back. Usually the cost for that is either the vapor barrier behind the door panel, it could also be the weather strip, on the car itself or on the door. It could also be the sunroof drains. I have a video on this, be sure to check that out. It'll be linked down below as well. Cosmetic wise on the interior, the headliner is one of the biggest pet peeves of a lot of people. And usually what happens is it starts to sag. These pillars, whenever the belt goes through it, they'll start peeling and then they'll start pulling off like this. All of the pillars do that, even the ones in the back. And the headliner you can see right here is sagging. The front pillars also have that issue, as you can see right here. Someone's tried to repair this previously, but didn't really work out too well. We have a video on when we actually redid the whole headliner, all the pillars. It's one of the earlier vlogs on my channel where we actually rewrapped the whole thing in suede. So be sure to check that out. So a few other common wear and tear items in the interior are all of the, the center console, the, these little compartments, the sunglass holder, the ashtray, and all that. You can see how many scratches and stuff is on this rubberized coating. Uh, you can actually repair that coating. A lot of people don't want to go through the hassle, but you can remove all this, sand it down. Uh, they do make actual same type of material. You can order it online, just Google it for the rubberized coating. Or you can sand everything down and just paint it with like a dupli color uh, interior paint or something. And that's just to restore it. It's not really a functioning issue, it's more of a cosmetic issue. And speaking of functioning issues, uh, one of the most common complaints I hear are, are related to the gauge cluster. So these tabs right here, sometimes you won't be able to push them anymore. This one still works. Both of these push ones still work. Uh, but sometimes, in order to adjust the time, you actually have to turn the knob. And the knob on this is the side that will usually turn, and it does not work anymore because the tabs are broken. So a sunroof shade also tends to break, but usually when it breaks, there is a repair kit out there. It's usually just the tabs that it attaches onto the rails to let it slide. And when those tabs break, you can't really just slide it as smoothly as it is right now. And I also have a repair video on that. 
As you can see, I've got the E46 chassis very well figured out. Obviously, I don't have every single video out there, but I'm trying to. For the ones that I do have there, all of them will be linked down below. So this right here is a manual seat, but it also still has a seat occupancy sensor. What that does, it actually tells the car if there's someone sitting in the seat, and that will help with any collision related issues. So if there was a wreck, uh, if there was someone sitting in the passenger seat and the airbags were to go off, it will let the whole airbag computer know that there was someone in that seat and consequently release that airbag. When the sensor goes bad, you'll start seeing the airbag light on your gauge cluster. Uh, usually it is the occupancy sensor which is right underneath the seat. It's a very quick repair and it's not that expensive, so be sure to check that out. And if you want to be sure that it is it, make sure you have some sort of scanning software for BMW. You could use Infa, you could use PA Soft. So make sure you have something that will be able to scan everything. That makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot these cars. And the Infa also works on E90 as well. So if you have one of those, make sure you have that. It makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot. Now that we're back on the outside of the car, let's talk about a few sensors and suspension related issues. So one of the major sensors that ends up tearing off actually is the ambient temperature sensor. So as you can see, this whole front fender liner is missing. The ambient temperature sensor plugs into the front, front fender liner on the driver's side. When the fender liner ends up giving out, usually this happens when people park too far over the parking stops or something like that. It'll break the tabs, and then when you're driving, it'll just keep rubbing and it'll fall right off. And what happens is the actual sensor itself, it goes with that whole fender liner, and the harness will tear right off. And sometimes the wires will get shorted together. When they are shorted together, on your gauge cluster, you'll see that the temperature outside will show up as 122 degrees. If that happens, you're still lucky because your AC will still work. Sometimes when it shows, when they're not shorting out, it'll show negative 40 degrees and then your AC compressor won't cut on. If you're, if you're having problems with your AC compressor not cutting on or if you just want to fix that, the easiest way to do it is to get the whole repair kit. It comes with the extended harness. You could solder the wires back together, crimp them, do whatever you want. Then you could tuck in the ambient temperature sensor wherever you want. But also while we're here, Another issue that is very common suspension related is the control arm bushings. The bushings on the E46, they usually last about 40 to, 40 to 60,000 miles depending on where you're driving. And the easiest way to check for that is to jack up the car and then you can move the wheel by grabbing it at 3 and 9 and just turning it. Try to do that. If you hear a clunking noise, it's usually the control arm bushing and you want to repair both of those in twos. Also, if you have other suspension related issues, uh, such as like a, a noise, like a clunking noise at slow speeds, it could also be your sway bar links. That's a very easy repair and it's not that expensive. A few of the other warning lights that tend to appear are the traction control, the brake, and ABS light. They usually come all three together. When that happens, it is usually the wheel speed sensor, which is located on each wheel. There's one sensor in each wheel. It's the one with the blue connector. There could just be dirt in between the connector, so sometimes you can get away by cleaning it, but otherwise, more than likely, it is the sensor itself. So if your speedometer stops working, more than likely, it is that right rear wheel speed sensor, and that's the only one that's easiest to diagnose because that gives you a direct issue with the speedometer. But other than that, if you have INPA, you can pinpoint any of these sensors. It's very easy to do that, so make sure you have some sort of scanning and diagnostic software. As I mentioned about warning lights on your gauge cluster, Another very common warning light, when you first turn the car on, sometimes your yellow oil light will come on for, let's say about, it'll come on for about 5-10 seconds, or maybe even 30 seconds. It's usually signaling that the oil level sensor is going bad, and the easiest way to repair that is whenever you do your oil change, you just drop the sensor off when, you, when you're down underneath the car. It's held in with three 10 millimeter nuts and just a connector. And all that is doing is it just tells you when your oil is a little too low, if the sensor is working, what will happen is it will come on while the car is on, and if it does, that means you're usually about a quart low. But if you turn your car off and then the oil level light comes on, that's the yellow oil level light, that means that your car is about half a quart low. So if, you're, if your sensor is working properly, make sure you follow those lights. If it's not, make sure you replace it on your next oil change. So if you've ever owned an E46, you've probably experienced this. This is the differential bushing. There's three differential bushings. There's one big differential bushing at the very back of the differential, and there's two smaller ones at the front. Usually the back one, the biggest, usually the back one will start causing a clunk whenever it's going bad. That clunk is often experienced when you go into reverse or drive, whenever you're shifting gears, if you're manual, 
you'll hear that clunk every time you push the clutch in or every time you shift. So if you are hearing that clunk, more often than not, it is a differential pushing. Uh, I have a video that goes more in depth to show exactly where it's located and everything. It's called a suspension overview video. We'll have that link down below as well. And then the scariest issue with the E46 is, doesn't matter what year you have, and this applies to M's, non-M's, it's more common in the M's because they are driven a lot more rigorously, is the subframe mounting points. They do crack. A lot of people say that in, in 2000, BMW did make a change. I think it was uh, either September of 2000, I believe. They did make some sort of change, but even after that, there's a lot of reported failures uh, going all the way up until the very end of the chassis. I've seen 2006 M3s with subframe, uh, subframe mounting point failure. And like I said, usually what happens is the mounting points around there, the chassis begins to crack where the subframe mounts. And then you'll have creaks, you can have clunks, it can get a lot worse, your whole rear end can fall out. You'll, you'll notice a lot more issues before the whole rear end falls out, so don't be scared about that. But if you are hearing any weird noises, make sure if you don't have the time to check it yourself, take it to someone like me that can put it on the lift and just give a quick visual inspection at the very least to see, to see if your subframe's really cracked or if it's just your differential bushing that's making all that noise. All right, so that's it for this video. I try to cover as much of the most common issues that I could. Obviously, there's a lot of other issues that can happen. They can be considered common, but if I was to go through every issue that I've seen that's happened more than two or three times, we'll be here all day. So, like I said, if you are trying to get one of these cars, E46, E90, I have the E90 video, make sure you go reference that. But in terms of the E46, they are getting a lot cheaper. Miles are also gonna be a lot higher. So when you do get these cars, you are gonna have to do quite a bit of maintenance right off the top. And like I said, the E46 is one of the most documented cars out there. There's a whole forum dedicated to it, it's called E46 Fanatics. It's probably one of your best resources. If you are experiencing, if you are experiencing an issue, I can almost guarantee you that someone's had that issue before and it is more than likely documented on E46 Fanatics. So before you go on and start messaging me about a, a simple question that you might have, make sure you go reference the forums first because I'm almost positive that that same issue that you're experiencing, someone has experienced it before and someone has given an answer already on the forums. All right, so that's it for this video. Make sure you go subscribe to our vlog channel as well to keep up to date on more current events that go on in our lives. And also go check out BMW Selena's channel where she is doing her LS3 swap. So thanks for watching everybody.